Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to talk about placement and resonance, or otherwise known as the mask of singing right here. It's called the mask of singing because we are going to be talking about placing our tone or focusing our tone in this area of our face because it can optimize the sound and make singing so much more effortless and you can have a larger tone without working so hard. So have you ever thought about why are some words easier to sing than others? I use this analogy a lot with my students and I say that singing in your resonance is like singing in a bathroom. Everything's magical in the bathroom and the shower, right? Well, not everything. <laughs> but you get what I mean. It's because there are hard surfaces for that sound to bounce off of. You just feel like you have to work a lot less. And then when you move into the living room or to a place that has lots of things for the sound to be absorbed, you feel like you have to work harder and it's not as impressive. You're like, oh, well, what gives? Why is it? In the bathroom and the shower, you have lots of hard surfaces for that sound to bounce off of. And then when you're in the living room or a dead recording studio, a dead room, so to speak, where there's lots of places for the sound to be absorbed, it's the same with the inside of our faces on the inside of our mouths. We have hard surfaces, and then we also have soft surfaces for the sound to be absorbed. The hard surfaces, we have the hard palate, and we also have this part right here, the resonance, which is some hard bone right in the front in that mask of singing. And then we also have soft places. We have our lips, our cheeks, our tongue, and the soft palate. So first let's find the soft places of our face, and then we're going to find the hard places of our face to create a buzz, and that's going to be a wonderful place to place our tone, to focus our tone for optimal singing. The soft places of our face of course, I've said this before, your cheeks, your lips, your soft palate in the back, and your tongue. So I've said this in other videos, just with opening the vocal tract and also just getting your tongue out of the way. If your tongue is lifted, do you hear how muffled that is? If your sound is placed in the back, toward the soft palate, you sound like affected opera singer, as I call it. And yeah, you just sound a little old, and it's really hard to control your tone. Now with your lips, not necessarily could the sound be absorbed, but if you don't open up, the sound can't come out. All right. And also I could do that with my cheeks as well, and just kind of place and puff my cheeks out. So those are the soft places. Now we're going to identify the hard places of our faces or the inside of our mouths. So when my students are first introduced to the term resonance, it's a little difficult for them to grasp that because they think, well, I speak and I sing and everything's fine, but they don't know where to feel it. So what I have them do is that I take their two fingers and then I have them pinch their noses. And when they pinch their nose, I have them focus all of their tone right in the nasal area. So that when they plug their nose, they have a really, really nasally sound like this. Yes, it's very attractive. <laughs> but if it's focused like this, do you hear that? How everything's coming out of my mouth this way? And it, you, don't hear, you don't hear any buzzing. But if you're here, you should feel a huge buzz right here in this mask of singing. <laughs> Maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but it really helps my students remind themselves, okay, where should I feel that placement? I should feel somewhat of a buzz right here in this nasal area. Now we're going to identify the hard palate. I want you to take your tongue, put it behind your front teeth, and I want you to drag it across the roof of your mouth, and you should feel this. Flat, flat, flat. Keep going. So you have a flat area right here, you have a dome, and then you have a little dip. If you keep going to the back of your throat, you're going to feel a squishy part, that is your soft palate. So if you have that, here, go back with me here, flat spot, find that dome. That dome right there is an optimal spot to place and focus your tone for optimal singing because that has a lot of hard surface for that sound to bounce off of. And the likelihood of your sound being absorbed by squishy parts of your face is not very likely. Now, when it comes to singing, we need to put everything in this front area right here. And we want to try to keep it there. But when we're speaking, we're using lots of different things in order to create sounds. Some are more so in the back, some so are more in the front. And I remember I was introduced to this concept the very first time with my very first voice teacher, and we were singing an Italian aria. And she stopped me and she said, okay, Katie, where do you feel it? And I had no idea what she was talking about. And she was talking about a group of words that had different vowels in them. And I said, oh, okay, so uh, she said, where do you feel the ooh 
And where do you feel the E and where do you feel the A ah in this word? Just focus on the vowels. And I said, U feels here. It feels like it's in the front. E feels like it's coming out of the top of my head. And A ah feels like it's in the back. Ooh, yeah, like that. And she said they should all be in the same spot. I thought, great. Now, how do I do that? <laughs> and so what she did is she used the analogy of a house. U is a very forward vowel, and it's really easy. Well, it's really not really easy, but it's easier, I should say, to find that forward spot. Hoo, hoo, hoo. So try that with me. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Okay. And there should be a kind of a buzz right here. You should feel that air coming up and over, just coming. Phew. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Nice and light. And then she said, now where you feel U, you need to push U out of its house, and E needs to come in the exact same spot where you feel it. So she had me connect the U and the E. Hoo, yeah, versus hoo, Very different, very different feeling, very different sounding. And the first one felt more full. It was a lot easier than the second one. Then she had me connect it with the ah, but she had it in the same, she said, put it in the same spot, Katie. Move E out of its house and then put the ah in there. Hoo ah, versus the first one, hoo ah. Hear that? It just went forward, middle, back, and it wasn't consistent in sound. So what she had me do is that she had me sing those three vowels and she tried to have me feel them all relatively in the same spot. So let's try that together. We're going to find those three vowels. We're going to connect those three vowels and then we're going to try to place them all in the resonance. Let's try to feel it right here. So in order to find your resonance, I find it's really easy with my students when they sing a vowel on a staccato. And it's not just any vowel. It's a vowel that feels very, very forward, like the hoo, hoo, hoo. So they feel that buzz right here, that they're just focusing that tone. Focus tone, focus tone, and then hoo, elongate. All right, so let's try that together. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Now where you feel the oo, we are going to sing an E with the same kind of staccato, focus tone, focus tone, and then glissando. He, he, he. Okay, now we have the ah. Try to find that same buzzing spot. Ha, ha, ha. Right, now we're going to try to connect each vowel together. Push each vowel, each the previous vowel, out of its house, so to speak, and then replace that vowel. Here we go. Hoo. And then just let it go. It doesn't have to be pretty. The main focus of this exercise is to find that resonance and connect different vowels and place them in the same spot. Now for a warm up. I'm going to start on the G above middle C and I'm going to be singing. Try to hang on to that placement as best as you can. Okay, so we have the Now here's a little trick with the ah. There's a pseudo Y in there. Yeah, and that Y really helps just launch it and keep it in that forward position. At least I think so. All right, let's try that. Two, three, here we go. Another exercise is e ah. It's really nice because it starts with that forward vowel and then you're opening up an ah. Again, there's a pseudo y in the middle. He ah. 
really focuses on trying to keep that tone focused right here. This next exercise is the color exercise and it features five different vowels. U, O, A, E, I. And they're a little bit more passive rather than just being like right in that front. But you have blue, hoo hoo, which is more in the front, gold, aqua, beige, green. So they're all going to be on colors. And it actually simulates what we would actually do if we were singing a song. Because when we're singing words, it can be a little bit more difficult because some words contain more than one vowel. And you're like, oh, isn't that fun? <laughs> but the point is to be able to sing a word and then connect the vowels together and try to feel it right here in this mask of singing. So it sounds like this. Blue, gold, aqua, beige, green. Blue, gold, aqua, beige, green. So before you sing this, practice those vowels or practice those words, I should say, and practice trying to connect the vowels and try to feel that in that resonant spot. Blue, cold, aqua, beige, green. Blue, cold, aqua, beige, green. With all of these exercises, it's very important to remember to lift the soft palate, but don't focus the tone there. Don't place your sound there. Focus the tone in this front area, this mask of singing. Now, if you want the full exercises of E, A, and also Blue Gold Aqua Beige Green, as well as some other resonant exercises, those can be found exclusively on my Patreon page. All right, I hope this helped you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.